welcome to podcast number two. My name is Claire and I've been knitting since November 2023 and I started this channel to share my knitwear creations. So I have one finished object today and a new cast on that I haven't shown yet um, and a little bit of progress in one of my other whips. Uh, but first I'm going to start off with what I'm wearing today which is actually the first sweater I ever knitted. This is the Novice Sweater by Petite Knit and I knitted this in Kama Rose Sneff Nug forgive my pronunciation. Uh, this is a alpaca cotton merino blend and it's a blown chainette yarn. I guess that's the word for it. And it is so soft. I think it's the softest yarn I've worked with so far. And I actually have a new cast on using the same yarn. Sneak peek right there. I love this yarn. It does pill quite a bit, but I think that's pretty normal for a yarn this soft and with the blown yarn style. But regardless, it's the type of sweater that I could just wear every day, kind of like a, a crew neck pullover. But this is a really simple pattern because it has a circular yoke and you make increases. You can kind of see the different lines of increases. And yeah, super straightforward construction. I've made this sweater twice, actually. I made this one for myself and then about a month later, I made one for my mom in the same yarn in a navy blue color. And it's just, it's great. I would definitely knit another one just because it's super quick and something that's very wearable. So now let's get into my first and only finished object, which is the Sonia sweater by Petite Knit. So lovely. I'm super excited to have finished this because I've already worn it like probably five times. <laughs> so I knitted this in Sonus Garn Pure Gint which is a 100% Norwegian wool, I believe DK weight yarn. And this is the color 1053. It's just like a dark gray heather. And I also held this with an Isayer Alpaca one in the color 4S. And this is a lace weight 100% alpaca. And it is a nice budget friendly option, more budget friendly than mohair. Uh, alternative and it's not as fluffy as mohair it just adds a little bit more weight to whatever you're knitting so the fabric that it makes is definitely a bit more rough it's definitely the roughest most rustic I guess is the word uh, sweater that I've knit so far but I actually don't really have an issue wearing it the first day or two that I wore it I definitely I felt it I wasn't like trying to get out of it as soon as possible but I felt it but now that I've worn it a couple days, I don't really notice it and I really love it. I think it fits exactly how I wanted it to, which is just a tad bit oversized. As you can see by the sweater, I usually make everything super oversized, but this one I went with a size large. And when I was gauge swatching for this, my gauge was, I don't know the, all the technical ins and outs of gauge swatching, but my gauge was smaller than what it was supposed to be. So I, chose a size large instead of like a medium, hoping that it would be more like a medium because of my, my gauge. So this pattern is a top-down construction. I don't really know what to call the shoulders on this. There's a lot of short row shaping on the shoulders here and a little bit on the sleeve too, just at the top. My favorite part about this sweater is definitely the neckband. I've actually never done like a crew neck sweater. I guess this is kind of a crew neck, but this one is just pretty simple. There's just ribbing. It's not folded over or anything, but this one is one by one rib and then you turn it and knit it down on the other side. And it's so thick and plush. It feels very professional. So I really love that. And it's definitely an everyday sweater that I can just, you know, take off. And I was talking about this in my last video. I was really excited to just like tie it around me. Obviously I wouldn't be wearing two sweaters at once. That would be crazy. But just like in the spring with a tank top and I can just like tie it like this. I don't know, I love it. Another thing is I had to add so much length to the sleeves when I was knitting this. I believe I had to add maybe 16 or 17 rows of stockinette, which was like this much length. And I don't think I have like crazy long arms. I'm 5'7", so I guess I'm a little bit tall, but I was really confused. I thought I did something wrong, but I just ended up adding it and adding in my own decreases. So it's a little bit off script from the pattern, but it still turned out fine. And it comes to a nice length on my wrist. 
Okay, now, when I blocked this, it was really strange. I'll insert a video so you can see. So much, I guess, dirt or dye came out of the fabric when I was washing it. I've never had this happen with a sweater that I've blocked. I've only made a few sweaters, and only one of them was a darker color, but this did not happen. I swear this was dirt because it was not the same color. It wasn't gray, it was brown. And so when I was blocking it, I just really tried to squeeze it out until the water ran as clear as it could. This does smell a little bit wooly still, you know, that like sheepy smell, but it's definitely not bad. And I think if I washed it again, maybe a little bit more dirt would come out. So we'll have to see. But so far it's worn really well. I haven't really gotten any pilling, which I think that this is supposed to be a pretty well wearing yarn because it is kind of more rustic, but it is pretty cost effective. It's, I think when I bought it, it was maybe seven or $8 per skein. And I bought 15 skeins of the Pure Gint and only four skeins of this. And I actually only used three. So I have this leftover and this leftover and that's it, which is really good because with all my sweaters so far, I've had a lot of leftover yarn. So pretty happy about that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. I do have a lot of extra skeins of yarn accumulating from my sweater projects. So sometime in the future, I'll have to figure out something to do with these. Okay, so moving on to my first whip. This is a pair of socks that I showed in the last video. I'm so sorry, this is gonna be so gray and so petite knit heavy but you know I'm not going to change what I knit for the purpose of this podcast really so this is just what I want to make right now and someday I'll probably be out of the phase of wanting neutral colors and I think that is coming soon because I am definitely wanting a fun color for spring but for now we're sticking with neutrals <laughs> um so this is the penny sock by petite knit and I think this sock looks hilarious. I don't know if you can really see the proportions of it, but it's still like long and skinny because this is all one by one rib. So I'm knitting this in easier sock yarn in the color 41. And this is a fingering weight yarn with 40% alpaca, 40% merino wool and 20% recycled nylon. And this is the only sock yarn I've used before. I showed it in my last video in a nice light pink color. And so far I've been loving the socks that I made with it. It has been felting a little bit on the bottom. And since it's my, that was my first pair of socks, I'm not too sure what's normal and what's not. But I think that this is definitely considered a little bit of a nicer sock yarn. It's so soft, I think it feels very lovely. So I am knitting this in the third size that they have on the pattern. And I'm not sure exactly what shoe size that is. I'm a size women's eight US. So that's the size that I'm going with. And I only have one done so far. And it looks really funny like this, but when you put it on, it's super cute. It's meant to be a slouchy, scrunchy sock. So I'll try to imitate it right here. So it kind of scrunches up like that when you're wearing it. And I think this is so cute. I have three pairs of socks that I bought commercially that have that same kind of slouchy style and I wear them all the time. So I'm super excited to have my own handmade pair. I have not casted on the other sock, but I need to do that soon so I can take it out and about because this is my on the go project. I take it on the train when I'm transportating. <laughs> I don't know the word. I can't think of the word for that. So I have one little weird issue with this. This is a short row heel, I believe. And when I tried it on, it felt a little tight. Like I, I was aware that I had a sock on when I tried this one on. And I'm not sure if maybe that'll go away when I block it because it does kind of stretch out once you block. So hopefully that'll help. But so far, I think the slip stitch heel from the last sock pair that I made was definitely more my favorite than this, but still super excited about this. All right, so now I have a new cast on. I didn't even have this yarn purchased in the last video. This was not even in my head as an idea, but I wore this sweater on a nice 60 degree day and I was like, this is perfect. I don't need a jacket over it. It's light enough, it's airy because this fabric is super drapey. So I 
ventured out to my local yarn store and bought 10 skeins of the Kama Rose Snuff Nug, which is the same one as this. And this is in the color Aska Gra. It's this really cool light gray color, but what makes it kind of heathered is that there's like black fa like fibers that are just blown throughout the yarn. So it's really cool. And I am making the Cloud Sweater by Petite Knit, which is more of a recent pattern release, I think. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's beautiful and I need it. So this is what I have so far. I have one sleeve done. I did the neck and I am starting with this sleeve and then I'll go back to the body. So I'm making this in a, an extra large because, well, one, I like oversized sweaters. Two, when I was buying the yarn, I did not want to buy mohair to hold with this, which is what the pattern suggests. So I just decided to just use the sniff nug and just size up my needles. So the pattern recommends a 4.5 millimeter needle, but I sized up to 5.5 to meet gauge. So this is definitely like a less dense fabric than what the pattern intends, but I think it's totally fine. And I wasn't worried about it being too holy or see-through because this sweater, I believe is knit on 5.5 or six millimeter needles. And I love the fabric. I think that the yarn actually kind of fluffs up too after you block it and wear it a little bit. So it's weird because this does look a little bit thinner, but just look at that gray color. That is so beautiful. I think that it's a really nice heather gray and it's coming out exactly how I wanted it to. So when I was doing the neckline, I cast off, this was a rookie mistake. I cast off, you know, it was just casting off knit wise. And I tried it on and it was so tight over my head. I have a real big head. Uh, so I had to undo the, the bind off and do it super loose so that it would be big enough to fit over my head. And now it's perfect. But I think that the details are really cool. So the neckline is just stockinette and so it curls over, right? And then the sleeve is really cool because there's a few rows of one by one rib and then you go back to stockinette to get that little curled end. And I think it is so cute. Also kind of a time saver because you don't have to do like 20 rows of one by one rib, which honestly does slow me down a little bit. I don't mind one by one rib, but it was pretty quick to do this. So this has been knitting up really quickly. I bought the yarn one week ago and I'm already this far. I do get pretty obsessed with my projects, so I tend to knit them really quick and I take them everywhere with me. But this is going to be so nice to wear when it's springtime weather, so I'm super excited to have another Snefnug sweater to... <laughs> that word is really funny to me. I'm definitely not pronouncing that right. I'm sure that... What, what language is this? I'm going to guess Danish, but I'm sure someone who's actually Danish would pronounce it way prettier than I would. Okay, so I actually wasn't planning on showing this because I did show it in my last video. And all I've done since then is just adding length to the body. But this is the camisole number five by my, my favorite things knitwear. And I'm knitting it in knitting for olive merino in the color putty, which is kind of a cool toned white, really light gray. And this has been quite the project because I started it in my first month or so of knitting, but when I went back to it after a couple weeks, my knitting tension had improved so much that you could really see the difference between beginner and improving. So I ended up frogging about that much of it, both sides, and started over. And I think it's looking a lot better. You can see that the stitches are relatively even. So this is the size small and it is super stretchy. Obviously it looks pretty tiny right here, but it does stretch quite a bit because it is two by two rib. And this pattern was so fun to work. The, you know, neckline and the shaping up here, it's not really shaping, the increases I'll say, because there was always something, you know, going on. You had to really pay attention to what you were doing to make all these increases. And that was super fun, but obviously doing all this two by two rib is a little bit less fun. So it's been dragging on quite a bit, but I haven't been rushing myself with this or prioritizing this project since it is way too cold to wear it. But I was able to get this 
off my needles on, onto some yarn to try it on. And I, I was hoping, I was really praying that it was not going to be too short, but it's definitely too short. Um, I will insert a clip so you can see, but it comes up just below where a bra would. So I definitely have to keep going on this. And I'm still debating whether or not I want to add a double knitted edge to the bottom, which would be a little modification from the pattern. The pattern just suggests a normal bind off, but I was thinking that I would like a little rib on the bottom or not rib. This is just, is it rib? No, it's stockinette. I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> the double knitting on the bottom. So I think I'm going to just keep knitting and then I'll decide once I get down to the bottom if I feel like it because that will definitely be a little bit of a crazy thing for me to do because I haven't really made any major modifications to a pattern before. I mean, this isn't even a major modification, but it would still be something that I would have to figure out a little bit how to do that. So besides the Snefnog acquisition for my newest cast on, I do have one thing to show that I purchased a few months ago, but since I haven't shown it on the channel, I was like, I might as well show it now, why not? So this is the Ito Gima 8.5, which is a 100% cotton and it is, I'm going to guess like lace, it's very thin. So when I was in Brooklyn with my mom, we went to Cleo's Yarn Shop and I saw this and I was like, that is so cool. And they were selling a pattern in the store for this like grocery bag. I actually had one of these that were probably from like Whole Foods, <laughs> but this one is cool because the bottom is made with crochet, which I crocheted for many years, a little less seriously than I am knitting right now, but I did crochet and the rest of it is made by knitting. So I thought this would be a really cool project to kind of combine my two <laughs> my two skills. So I just got two of these and the color is Lime 626. It's really cute. It's kind of like a yellowy pastel green and I am super excited. I think this will be such a good like summer spring whip because it's not going to be super heavy or hot to like knit with your sweaty hands in the summer. That's kind of gross but yeah so I will hopefully cast this on in a few weeks once it becomes warmer. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I apologize if this was a little bit of a shorter video, but I was so excited to film another one of these because I got so much support on the last one. It was unexpected. I didn't think anyone was gonna watch, so I'm super excited that people actually wanna see my projects and hear what I have to say. So yes, this was a little bit of a shorter one. Didn't have too, too much to show like I did in the last one, but regardless, I'm going to keep knitting so I can show more. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.